So uh, before I start, I would just like to ask if there are any doubts from the previous sessions, please put it in the chat because it's important. We clear off the basics before we go on to the uh, treatment aspects of uh, DDH. So uh, before we get into the treatment, one last uh, radiological thing that we missed out last time or rather not missed out, I had uh, postponed it to this session is because uh, ultrasound is a novel technique for the detection of hip dysplasia and uh, it's an upcoming technique. So both from your theory as well as your practical point of view, you are going to see many reports of children with uh, hip dysplasia or a developmental dysplasia of the hip come to you. And it is important that you will, uh, you should know how to read this uh, particular finding and how to prescribe treatment according to ultrasound as well. So let's start off with why ultrasound? Why not an X-ray? Now, uh, this is because uh, the ultrasound gives us a very uh, vivid experience of uh, visualizing the, uh, the cartilage, which is there within the hip joint, which is not possible through an X-ray. An MRI, of course, it is possible, but the problem with an MRI is it's expensive, it's time consuming, and you'll have to sedate the child. So ultrasound is the best of both worlds where we get a, a dynamic uh, sort of an environment or dynamic picture of the hip joint with its uh, cartilage status as well. So to understand the anatomy, uh, to understand the ultrasound, we need to understand how the anatomy is going to be like. So if you see the x-ray, the ultrasound is going to be very similar to it because it's the same hip. How much more different can it be? So it has to be similar to the, uh, to the uh, x-ray of the hip joint. So the only difference you're going to see is that in a hip x-ray, you see it in the AP view. But in the ultrasound, you will be looking it, uh, looking it uh, into the uh, acetabular cup straight on. Okay. And what you will be seeing is a picture sort of like this. You are going to see a picture of the hip, very similar to how it is seen on an x-ray, but you will be seeing it from the side. Okay. So if we see, if we see that uh, this is the ultrasound image of the hip, it's so similar to the X-ray of the hip. You are having the iliac bone here, which is similar to the iliac bone here. You have the triradiate cartilage in between. You have the triradiate cartilage here. There is, of course, things that you do not see on the X-ray. That is the labrum, the labrum here. And of course, the head within it, the femoral head, which will take this space up. So this is basically the anatomy because what we see is not just the bones, but on the ultrasound, we also see the cartilages, the hyaline, the fibrocartilage, as well as the muscles. So to understand the anatomy, we need to know that we are looking at the anatomy sideways. Okay, so if you see the previous picture, the transducer is a linear transducer, which is used. High frequency linear transducer. It's, it's called a 10 3 transducer. If you have to ask your ultrasound technician, just tell them to keep a linear 10 3 transducer ready. So it is used with the, there is an uh, X mark on every probe. So the probe has to be facing, uh, the, uh, the marker on the probe has to be facing the head of the child. And the, uh, the probe is supposed to be parallel to the ground. Okay, it's, it is supposed to be parallel to the ground with the, with the child in supine. With the child supine. So an uh, easier way to remember this is keep the probe in the same plane as the abdomen or the spine. So if the spine is going to be in, this, in the uh, supine position, spine is going to be back on the bed. So keep it flat on the bed, the probe. If you're doing, the, uh, doing it with the child in the lateral position, then keep it perpendicular, uh, keep it parallel to the spine with the marker facing upwards. So if this is clear, then we will move on to 
what are the echoes or what are the shadows that we see on the ultrasound we see three different types of shadows okay so first we have the a uh, little echo or there is hardly any echo because this is the hyaline cartilage of the hip and this little echo area is made up of the femoral head which is the epiphysis of the femoral head as well as the hyaline cartilage of the acetabulum so this region as well as this entire region is having no echoes because this is the hyaline cartilage of the hip joint next we have the moderate echo structures which are the capsule and the muscles now if you see here these are the muscles that is the gluteus uh, minimus the medius on top of it we have the rectus femoris here and that's the capsule so these are the things with moderate echo and lastly we have strong echoes now strong echoes come from structures which are which are quite bony so this is the fibrocartilaginous labrum is one such structure because it's fibrotic and the second thing is the bone that is the uh, the uh, innominate bone as well as the junction of the that's the junction of the femur head and the neck so these are the things that are going to have a very strong echo so if you understand the three different types of echoes it is not important for you from theory point of view this is from a practical point of view now from a theory point of view you have to draw this image so 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 that you have a better understanding so you are having the cartilage of the acetabulum as well as the femoral head as well as the triradiate cartilage these three things do not have any echo that is why they will appear black on the ultrasound image there are uh structures such as the gluteus medius gluteus minimus as well as this structure here which looks like the labrum this sharp pointy structure which looks like the labrum but it is not the labrum it is the reflected head of the tendon of the rectus femoris the other sharp structure that you see here which is having a very strong echo is the fibrocartilaginous labrum okay so out of the two structures the most inferior structure is going to be your labrum okay so this is your uh, sonographic anatomy of your hip joint with this idea in mind we need to calculate the angles now all of us know that there is going to be an alpha angle and a beta angle but we are not aware how do we calculate these angles so to calculate these angles we need to find out three points the three points are the first one is the center point of your fibrocartilaginous slip the second point is your triradiate cartilage that's where it starts because the bone ends and then there is no echo over here so this is where the triradiate cartilage is present and the third part is the junction of the fibrocartilage uh, of uh, the junction of the hyaline cartilage as well as the bony structure of the ilium so this is the cartilage this is the bone so where both of them meet is the x mark that's a third x mark so this particular bend this particular curve that you see here it can be a smooth structure which we see in this particular ultrasound image or it can be a sharp structure like this so it can be either smooth that is rounded or it can be sharp it is sharper in hips that are well developed it is smoother in hips that are not very well developed and that is why they are having acetabular